today, I want to continue on this active faith message. And I want to talk to you on the subject of what do I have? What do I have as a question? Is a question. <coughs> Amen. What do I have? Exodus. Exodus. Chapter number three. Chapter number three. You don't carry your Bibles. I don't know. Do you have your Bible? <clears throat> Exodus. Chapter number three. God comes to um, Moses and calls him to go and do an audacious assignment. Something that is beyond. Oh, we also have the Guinness uh, World Record. Seta. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Rose Tata, come up, come up. Please be. Let's appreciate Rose Tata. Sit down, sit down. I put square your picture. Rose Tata uh, was able to click 62 hours, 33 minutes, and 34 seconds of the longest science lesson that has ever been recorded. So she has set a record. And, uh, and I believe that soon and very soon the results are going to come out and she's going to be declared the Guinness World Record. Amen. Is indeed amazing. Do you want to hear from the champ? Right. Let us say something. Praise God. Honorable Kato, this is our Guinness World Record. She's from this county. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God again. I thank God for today and I thank him for his strength. And I kept on holding on to the word that dad declared that the spirit of might will be upon me. And any time I felt weak, I would remember that I am a mighty woman, as declared by our man of God. So I'm really grateful. I would not have done this without my church family. Indeed, when dad says that all you need is within a radius of 100 meters, I am a testimony and I am a living proof. Thank you so much, dad. I, I believe in you and I love you so much. Me, I believed in you long time ago. <laughs> God bless you. Come on, let's appreciate her. We, we, we used to call her Rose Wa Guinness. You know, when we meet, we say Rose Wa Guinness. So I was telling her, you can't have Guinness for 62 hours and be normal. You know. <laughs> and so we thank God for her. I believe that great doors are going to open for her in the future. Amen. Amen. It's not a mean task. And you know, Kenyans, we, 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 we like things that don't make sense, like singing for a long time. But this is science, teaching science. When you listen to teacher Rose, you realize that your teacher was a hoax. <laughs> hey, she was teaching nicely, quite hey, wonderful. Amen. All right, Exodus. Okay. Nini? Exodus chapter number three. Okay, the husband is also here. Okay. <laughs> Amen. All right. <laughs> now, Moses is called to do something big, like God is calling you to do great things. And God is calling him to deliver an entire nation. Uh, from slavery and he has called him to do something audacious something great something strong 
And like everybody else, Moses begins to say, what do I have? Am I really supposed to be great? I want you to look at the person next to you and tell them, God has called you for something great. Oh, yes. Even the way you are telling your neighbor, it's not like you really believe. So, tell your neighbor, God has called you for something great. Something that is beyond you. Something powerful. And like Moses, Moses begins to wonder, me, me, how can I be the one to deliver these great people? And Moses expresses his um, fears and his inadequacies to God. So verse 11 or verse 10, the Bible says in verse 10, Come now, therefore, this is God speaking, and I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And look at the response from Moses in verse 11. But Moses said, can we read together one, two, three, the Bible says, but Moses said to God, who, I can't hear you church, uh-huh, that I should go to Pharaoh, Pharaoh, it depends with which school you went to, and who was your teacher, mine was teacher Rose, Pharaoh, <laughs> who am I? That I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. It's like, what do I have? What do I have? Then look at Exodus chapter 3 verse 1. Uh, chapter 4 verse 1. Chapter 4 verse 1. Quickly. Ooh. Chapter 4 verse 1. Alright. The Bible says, chapter 4. Then Moses answered and said, but suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say the Lord has not appeared to you. And, and, and he keeps giving excuses and excuses and excuses why he should not be the one to go and help the people. How, how, what if they don't believe me? Verse 2, the Bible says, uh, verse 2, so the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a rod. And the Lord said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from it. You will be surprised what God has given you is what you need to become what God wants you to become. So the question I want to answer this morning is what do I have because it's a question that everybody has everybody is asking do i have anything i come from the poorest family i come from my, my, my even my account right now is not even active if i log in it said it was disabled because it has not seen any money in it and you wonder what do i have when you look at your family you see your family is probably crumbling when you look at your health, it looks like you, it is bleak. When you look at your future, it's like there is nothing great that is coming in the future. You wonder, what do I have? And God looked at Moses and he told Moses, you have something in your hand. I want to tell somebody here today, you have something in your hand. You know, we live in a time where everybody wants uh, to blame somebody for their problems. We live in a time where everybody is saying the government, Sairikal, Saidia, Isairikal, Isairikal. But guess what? The children of God don't live like that. The children of God look at, they always look at what God has given to them. Who would have thought that somebody like Rose can teach for 62 hours nonstop? Even her, you know, I've seen Rose grow. She grew in my house. I think you should come and grow in my house. 
I've seen her grow. I've seen, I, I've woken her up before and said, is of your mboziko kitchen. Nikifungua macho zikwezibe Oshua. One time she even came to me and she was discouraged. She wanted to stop schooling, you know, because she's bright. And I told her, I'll remove my belt and I'll beat you. Go back to school and finish. Are you listening to me? So you, you, you wonder, somebody like you, what is it that you have? Because Moses did not get something from out there. God just came to Moses direct and told him, you have something in your hand. What is it? And he said, a rod. And he said, put it down. And immediately he put it down, it turned into a snake. And he couldn't believe that what he was holding in his hand was a miracle weapon. It is the same rod that he touched water and the water became blood. It is the same rod that he touched the Red Sea and the Red Sea parted. There is something that you have that God has given to you for you to fulfill your assignment here on earth. Oh yes. I want you to look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you are not empty. I even don't like the way you are telling your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, you are not empty. There is something God has given to you. And that is what I want to teach you today. Can I hear an amen from somebody? I'm praying that out of this congregation will rise mighty warriors. Will rise mighty men. Will rise great entrepreneurs. Will rise mighty men of God. Will rise mighty great warriors. If you're one of them, I want to hear your loudest amen. Sit down. Let me show you what you have. Glory to God. Hmm? Now, the first thing you have is the word of God. You know, this is our year of active faith. And brothers and sisters, you must believe that God's word is your tool to succeed and to do well in life. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. The Bible says, study, New Living Translation. <clears throat> the Bible says, study this book of instruction. So the first thing you have is the word. Somebody say the word. <laughs> now look at it, what it says. Study this book of instruction continually. How many times should you study the word of God? I can't hear you. Then watch this. It says meditate on it once a week. Oh no, I can't hear you. Once a week. Only during the day. It says day and night. So you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then. What will happen to you when you do that? Only then you will prosper and do what and succeed in all you do so what do i have i have the word of god because when i meditate on god's word and when i read it every day and i think about meditating is thinking deeply about the thing when i think deeply about what god is telling me then the bible says i will prosper and i will succeed now, many people don't like those kind of answers. You ask people, you tell people, you want to prosper? Take the word. Take the word. They say, ah, we're banakua realistic. The word, how will it prosper? I want food. I want money on my table. I want money in my account. Nataka kazi. But the Bible teaches us that if you take the word of God, and begin to study it and to love it and then meditate on it and then obey it because i want to you to write this down any faith or any belief you have that you don't obey is useless if you say i believe but you don't obey whatever you obey is what you believe so the bible says you will prosper and you will do well so you have the word of god Number two, the Bible teaches us we have all things. Number two is I have all things. I want you to repeat after me. Say, I have all things. 
but somebody's not saying it. Say, I have all things. Somebody's saying, but I don't have all things. You have all things. Can I prove to you you have all things? Do you munamini maneno ya mungu kwele nyi watu? Eh? 20 people only. Do you believe? Look at 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. 2 Peter. I have all things. You see, whatever you need is not somewhere in the air. God has already given it to you. All you need to do is to find out where is it and what it is. So, first, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3 says, By his divine power, God has given us everything we need. Watch here, Apple. God has given us some things we need. God has given us everything we need for living what? A godly life. We have received what? Oh, you're not talking to me. We have received what? Ka by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glorious excellence brothers and sisters the bible teaches me that i have all things whatever is needful for my destiny god has given it to me god will be so irresponsible to put everything you need in an uncle in america that meaning if my uncle in america just i'll be i'll do well no God has given you all that you need. I want you to repeat after me. Say, I have all things. It is in you. It is in your house. It is in your brain. It is in your heart. You don't need even a government. You don't need even a, 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 an uncle. You don't need a sponsor. Ah, I say you don't even need a sponsor God has given you all things I want you to repeat after me and believe it Say I have all things Number three Another thing that you have that you think you don't have Is I have dominion I have dominion God wants you to know that he has given you dominion. God has given me dominion. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. When God created man, he gave him dominion. You see, when you don't know, you don't exercise what your power. The enemy capitalizes on your ignorance. The enemy capitalizes on your ignorance. Even if you meet a police officer and the police officer realizes you are ignorant. Huh? Kitakuramba. <laughs> but look at what the Lord says. The Lord God said, let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion and what do you have dominion over the bible says over the fish of the sea over the birds of the air and over the cattle i think he was talking to Masai. and over the earth all the earth somebody shout i have dominion and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and the people that have tapped into this power of dominion, you see them controlling the sea. They control the earth. They control the air. Do you understand? And I'm telling you right here are people who can control the sea. There are people right here who can control the earth. Oh yes, there are people right here who can control the air. Oh yes. Yesterday I was talking to another pilot and I was asking him, how many Kenyans have private jets? I was so sad. 
I was told many of the rich Kenyans in Kenya have helicopters. But Gulfstream, I mean, if you watch, uh, if you watched NFL, Super Bowl, najuata mjuyo ni nini, lakini andika tuku wa karatasi, Super Bowl. You see that all the guys that went for Super Bowl, they were going with their jets. There was a, a jam, traffic jam of jets at the airport. I want to tell you, those are people who have mastered dominion. They have tapped into what God has given to them and they are living in that prosperity. And I'm here to tell a Kenyan, a harvester. Oh, let me try, let me try. I'm here to tell you, God has given you dominion. And guess what? You are going to rise from wherever you are to where God wants you to be because he has put dominion inside of you. You are not going to be crying. People who dominate don't cry at the corner and saying, Yes, Rikali. Oh, Sijui Kama Ninani Angechukua. Ah, those are poor minding, poor thinking, petty thinkers. Great men of dominion are men who say, I can do all things. I have dominion over the sea, I have dominion over the air, I have dominion over the earth. Somebody shout, I have dominion. I have dominion over the cattle in the fields. I have dominion over every creeping thing. Somebody shout, I have dominion. Touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor, I have something. And that is dominion. Number four, sit down. Hey, somebody say, I have dominion. Oh, yes. No, God has put something in you. He has invested something in you. <laughs> I got it. And guess what? Many of you are going to be land owners. Oh, yes. Many of you are going to be skyscraper owners. Oh, yes. Ata hapa lazima tujenge helipad. You will be landing ticket, 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 ticket. Because somebody needs to say, I have dominion. And the economy of the nation does not dictate. Because we live in a higher economy. A greater economy. And that is why my God has given me something. And what is that thing that he has given me? I can't hear you. I can't hear you dominion that is something you have you're asking pastor what do I have I have dominion number four what do you have I have the desires of my heart I have the desires of my heart I have the desires of my heart these are things that you are not looking for they have been given to you I have the desires of of my heart. How do I know? Psalms 37 verse 4. Psalms 37 verse 4. Dominion. 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 Glory to God. Somebody say dominion. Oh yes. Glory to God. I have the desires of my heart. The Bible says in Psalm 37 verse 4. Can we read together, everybody? Uh, uh, uh. Do you have a throat? Do you have a throat? Is it your throat? Okay, clear your throat. <clears throat> what does it say? Delight yourself also in the Lord. And and uh, the only key I need is to delight myself in the Lord. What is delighting yourself? Give me another version. Change the version. Amplify, amplify. Keep company with God. Ah. Keep company. To, de to, to delight yourself in the Lord is to keep company with the Lord. I was listening to another young man who was being interviewed recently. And he was, I mean, um, uh, he's succeeding in business and he was asked 
What is your greatest fear? I could not believe the answer. The answer was to lose favor with God. He said, my greatest fear is to lose favor with God. And I said, profound. Profound. Let me tell you, when God favors you, eh? <laughs> nobody can tune you. Nobody can deny you. Nobody can say, Quera Uko. The Bible says, Jesus grew in favor with God and with man. With God and with man. Many of us, we try to gain favor with man before we gain favor with God. If you can have favor with God, man has no option, uh, another option. It's like, it's like people just say, I don't know why. But, take this. I don't know why, but I feel like I should do this. I was seated uh, this week. I don't know whether I should tell you my story or not. <laughs> For security reasons, care, I don't know. I don't know. Let me just, let me just keep that story to myself. <laughs> However, this week, I saw God's favor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was seated and somebody did something for me. And he said, I just felt in my spirit, he's in another country, that I should do this for you. That I should do this. I mean, people will be in other countries. People will be in the village. People will be in, in state house. People will be wherever. And they will call you and they say, we don't know why. But we feel we should do this for you. It is favor with God. Ah, that is my prayer for you today. Keep company with God. Seek your happiness in the Lord. And he will give you your heart's desire. Sit down, I tell you another story. Sit down, I tell you another story. As I, I'm about to finish. So, listen. Another guy. Not a guy, a man of God. He, somebody took him in America. He's Nigerian. Somebody took him to America and told him in Bel Air, in California. And he told him, he took him to the, to the most expensive places in California. Have you been to California? <laughs> My friend, California. I don't know how California next week. By faith. The, in California, is one of the richest. Actually, California as a state only, its GDP is bigger than some nations. Now, he took him to the rich man's area. You know, rich people in America, South Africa, they build on hills. So he took him to check houses. He said, any house you want, it is going to be your house. <laughs> yeah, he was moving from one house to another checking any house you want that is what i'm talking about favor favor means you receive things that you do not deserve and the bible says seek your happiness in the lord and he will give you the desire you have to buy there are things that only favor can deliver to you and so what do you have i have my heart's desire Number five, I have the blessings of Abraham. I have the blessings of Abraham. Those are things you have. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 and 14. It says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written... Cursed is everyone who hangs 
on the tree. Then verse 14, he says that the blessing of Abraham eh, might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. I mean, if you want to know the blessings of Abraham, just go to the book of Genesis and start studying Abraham. The Bible says the man, just his servants, he had 380 servants. People to serve him, take care of him. And the Bible says he had gold, he had silver, he had cattle, he had lands. That is how God blessed him. When he left his father's house, he had nothing. He walked just in obedience to God. But by the end of his life, Abraham was so blessed with things. And the Bible says that that blessing of Abraham is also on us. Because we have Christ in our lives. I want you to look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, Abraham's blessings are mine. There's even a song we used to sing, Kitambo. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. Blessed in the noontime. Blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. Yes. So when you ask yourself, what do I have? One of the answers you should give yourself, I have Abraham's blessings. What do I have? Pastor, my marriage is crumbling. Pastor, I have no job. Pastor, I have no this, I have no that. I want you to remember, you have Abraham's blessing. And may they become active and practical in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. What else do I have? Second last, third last. I have the greater one in me. I have the greater one in me. First John chapter 4 verse 4. I have the greater one in me. You are of God. The Bible says little children. And you have overcome them. Because he who is in you. Is greater than he who is in the world. Eh? What do you have? I have the greater one in me. By the way, what you know, a lot of, in this life, if you want to be successful in anything, everything must come from inside out. Inside out. That is why it is impossible to love somebody who does not love himself. It is impossible to make somebody successful who is not fast successful inside. That is why if you win the lottery today, 400 million, because if you are not rich inside, your wealth that you have received in monetary form, it will dance down to your level, which is called the, is it a thermostat? Eh? I taught you about that thing. It's called what? Financial thermostat. Your financial thermostat, if it is not in millions, it is in hundreds of thousands. If you received a million today, it must come down to your thermostat where you can handle. So, who is in you is important. That is why the Bible says, he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. So, I want to ask you a question. Do you believe that you have the greater one in you? This message is for Christians. This message is for born again Christians. If you are born again, then he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. I need you to confess that with me. Say, I have the greater one in me. Second last is number what? Seven is I have the power of God working through me. Glory to God. I have the power of God working through me. <laughs> How do I know 
I know it from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Let me tell you, the fight you are involved in is the fight for power. If you are in a marital fight, it's power fight. If you are in a, in a, in a, in a work-related fight, it is power fight. And I want you to know, you should never be a Christian who does not release God's power. God is superpower. Hey. Can you remember that song we used to sing? Jesus power, superpower. That's the power that is at work in you. Satan's power, powerless power. The people you are trying to fight with, the people you are, that are trying to get you down, they are trying to show their power. But what do I have? I have the power of God working through me. When you go to your office, release the power of God. When you go to your house, release the power of God. When you open your business, release the power of God. My God. So most of you ukisikia mchawi, mnaanza kutetemeka. Mimi sitaki mashida na wachawi. Hey! The Bible says, you shall not suffer a witch to live. The witch doctor has no power more than your God. Illuminati. You see Kenyans, when they see prosperity, they say, we are mekwa Illuminati. Who told you that the devil has more power than God? You see Kikuyus, my tribe, they are the ones that mix the devil and God in the same sentence. But God and the devil cannot be in the same sentence. Because God's power is super power. Kikuyu said that if God can bless me, I build a house like that one. I'll be rich like the devil. The devil has no riches. Has no power. I don't understand how you can be a businessman who has no power. I don't understand how you can be a politician with no God's power. I don't understand how you can be a career man without God's power. This week, my brothers and sisters, release God's power. I say release God's power. Where is the power? It is in me. Money answers to power. How can you be broke? First Corinthians 1.24 I have the wisdom of God operating in me. Christ is the power of God but also he is the wisdom of God. Yes, by wisdom the Bible says, a house is filled with treasures. Oh yeah. If it was not for the wisdom of God, we would not be this far where we are. We, have, we don't owe any bank. We fill a house with treasures, with all good things. And Christ is not just the power of God, but he's also the wisdom of God. Oh yes. First Corinthians 1. 24 verse 30. So what do you have? I have the wisdom of God. What do I have? I have the power of God working through me. What do I have? I have the greater one in me. What do I have? I have the blessings of Abraham. What do I have? I have the spirit of power. Oh, did I give you the spirit of power of love and of a son mind? Write it down. Say I have the spirit of power of love and of a sound mind. I have the desires of my heart. I have dominion. I have all things. And I have the word of God. So don't say I have nothing. Because you have more than 10 things. That God has given to you. I don't expect any one of you to fail. God is not expecting any one of you to fail. 
God is not expecting any one of you to go down because he has given you power. Somebody shout, I have power. Somebody say, I have something. God has given me all things. I can't hear you. Say, God has given me all things. I want you to say it louder. Say, God has given me all things. Stand up on your feet in Jesus' name. I want you to put your hand on your chest and pray anything God has given me. Let it manifest this week. Open your mouth for a minute. I want you to pray for yourself and say, Oh Lord, oh Lord everything you have given me, everything you've given me, let it manifest this let week. It manifest this week. Tell the Lord, I've realized, I've realized I have many things. I, have many things. I must activate them. I must, activate I must use them. I must use them in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth for a minute and pray that prayer. Father, thank you because I have all things. Have thank all you, things. Father. Thank because you, this Father. week, because this week, I will manifest everything will that you have given unto me. Oh, I wish you were praying because there is power. There is power inside of you. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, I want to manifest all things that you have given to me. I want to have dominion. I want to have dominion in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord, because I have it. Because I have it. I, I will never say I have nothing. Because I have something that I have received from the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody shouts aloud, Amen. Why don't you clap your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. Now, I want you to take oil. Do you have oil? Oil. And put it on your head a little bit. On your head. Oh, yes. Nime Pakwa. Some little oil, just something small to put on your head. Just a dot. And believe God that He has anointed you in the name of Jesus. Nime Pakwa. Mafuta Mapichi. I pray by this oil. Then begin to lay hands on yourself and say, "By this oil, by this oil, all the things that have been given, all the things that have been given, may they begin to manifest. May they begin to manifest. By this oil, by this oil, let the power of God, let the power of God begin to work in my life. Begin to work in my life. By this oil, by this oil, let every closed door, let every closed door be open, be open in my life. In my life. By this oil, by this oil, let the the curse of poverty, the curse of struggle and hardship, be broken now. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray for a minute and say, In the name of Jesus, ah, by this oil, I have dominion. By this oil, I have all things. By this oil, I have the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. By this oil, I have dominion. By this oil, I have the blessings of Abraham. Father, I anoint myself this morning. And I anoint myself with oil to release power in my life. Let every door fly open. Let every chain break. Let every disease be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. I believe, I believe it and I receive it. And, I receive and if you believe it, clap your hands and give the Lord a shout of praise Hallelujah. in the house. You may be seated.